For some people, mood swings are extreme, going from a very low low to a very high high and back to a very low low. And that's how it was for the children of Israel. They had been slaves for a long time in Egypt and now they had been delivered by Moses and brought out and no doubt there was great joy as they travelled. But then they turned around to see that the Egyptians had sent the army after them and they despaired thinking that they would be killed in the wilderness. But Moses sought the Lord, and the Lord showed him a way through the Red Sea. The wind blew all night, the water was blown back, and the children of Israel could walk through on dry land. But when the Egyptians sought to follow them, the Lord took off their chariot wheels and bogged them in the bottom of the Red Sea, and returned the waters over them, so that in the morning the children of Israel looked out on the dead bodies of their enemies. And so, Exodus chapter 15, we have the great rejoicing of the children of Israel as they look back on their enemies and see them all gone. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. And in the greatness of your excellence, you have overthrown those who rose against you. You have set forth your wrath, it consumed them like stubble, and with the blast of your nostrils the waters were gathered together, the flood stood upright like a heap, the depths congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them, I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dancers. And Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur, And they were three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now, when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them, and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where there were twelve wells of water, and seventy palm trees. So they camped there by the waters. My name's Arthur, thank you for joining me as we share together these verses from Exodus chapter 15. Verses 1 to 21 have the song of Moses, where he rejoices in what the Lord has done. For the children of Israel were in an impossible situation. The Lord had led them there. He was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. But when they looked around, they saw mountains on the left and on the right, the Red Sea in front of them and the Egyptian army behind them. It was an impossible situation. The Egyptians were just going to take them back to Egypt again. But the Lord had led them there and the Lord had a way through the Red Sea. So when Moses prayed to the Lord, the Lord told him to raise his hand over the sea, and the Lord sent the wind that opened the sea. Meanwhile, the Lord moved the pillar of cloud from in front of the Israelites to behind the Israelites, and so gave the Israelites light in the pillar of fire, but gave the Egyptians darkness. 
in a tremendous storm on the other side of the cloud and kept the two separated all night while the waters blew back in the Red Sea. And as the children of Israel walked across, the Egyptians chose to follow them, thinking we can overtake them, not realising that they were walking into a trap that the Lord had set for them. And the Lord would gain a very long-term victory over the Egyptians. The Egyptian army would be weakened for many years to come. And the story of this crossing of the Red Sea would make the hearts of the enemies of Israel melt. For Egypt was known as a very great power. But the God of Israel had shown that they were not great at all. Well, from the elation of that victory and participating in what the Lord had done, reality soon sets in. They're in the wilderness and they travel for three days and find no water. And when they do find water at a place called Mara, the water was not drinkable. And so the people are getting desperate. We need water. What shall we drink? And of course, they lay it all on Moses, their leader. So he calls out to the Lord. And we're told the Lord showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. God has remedies in nature for all kinds of things. And while we are in a very scientific age and we manufacture all kinds of medicines, the medicines that we manufacture are just duplicates of things that God has already created in nature. And sometimes we find chemical ways of constructing these things. But usually the chemical way is not as safe as the biological way. Nevertheless, the Lord showed Moses this tree. And when he threw it into the water, the waters were healed. And we can recognize in the tree a picture of the Lord Jesus. When he comes into our life, he turns what is bitter into sweet. He grew up as a tender plant only to be cut down on account of our sin and the bitterness in our lives, that we might be healed. But then Moses puts a charge upon the people, and this I find very significant. He says, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. The scriptures in several places speak about blessings that come upon people who diligently follow the commandments of the Lord. Proverbs chapters 8 and 9 deal with this. And the principle is simple. God has designed this world and he has designed it to be safe and free of disease if we follow certain rules. But if we ignore those rules and just indulge in doing as we please, then it is not so safe for us. And in particular here he's talking about the diseases of Egypt. He will give the children of Israel instructions about cleanliness and diet. In cleanliness they will avoid many of the diseases that come upon people. Our society has generally learned this fairly well in a physical sense. We are very good at washing our hands. But unfortunately, we have not maintained it in a spiritual sense. And so we indulge in all kinds of mental uncleanness, bringing murders and things right into our lounge rooms with our TV sets and all kinds of things are brought into our thoughts. Unless you regularly wash your spirit as well as your hands, then you will be affected by these things. This program is not suitable for those under 15 because of what it depicts, adult themes, so-called. Well, the principle is, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I had brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. 